review of the year first of all we should know the proper anatomy to understand the ear diseases <coughs> we know that the ear develops at the third fetal weeks <coughs> and uh, there is uh, formation of two four to six arches in the uh, develop develop on the side of the head this is a uh, recess or uh, mesenchymal recess which is covered internally by endoderm and extended by ectoderm on the process of development the recess are divided into recess by forming a furrows furrows <coughs> thus uh, in this way recess are formed and the furrows internally produce the um, pharyngeal pouch pharyngeal um, and uh, externally visceral cleft from this visceral cleft and uh, pharyngeal pouches the uh, ear develops you know that uh, the ear has three parts external ear middle layer and internal layer the external layer consists of auricle or pinna and external layer canal or external ear meters this external ear from the first visceral arch uh, which is designated into the internally to form the external ear canal and middle ear comes from the tubotympanic recess which is extend from the nasopharynx lateral wall of the nasopharynx which uh, become the middle ear cavity and there is internal ear internal ear comes from the placot in the skin which is sink below the skin and adapt is a position uh, internally just medial to the middle layer this in this way the external layer middle layer and internal layer communicates or conjugated this external layer has got two parts that is pinna and external ear canal or meters the pinna is a um, structure which is consist of yellow elastic cartilage which um, uh, grows inside the external ear canal the, that is outer one third of the uh, external ear canal which is also consist of the cartilage that is pinna and external one third of the uh, external ear canal is made up of cartilage and the internal two third of the uh, external ear canal is made up of bone so that is the external ear canal consists of cartilage and bony portion so external ear canal has a length of 24 to 25 mm one third is cartilaginous which is lined by thick skin and contains the pilosebaceous and seruminous gland seruminous gland is the modified sweet glands from this 
modified sweet glands that is serovenous gland and pilus vessels gland that is secretion which is intermingled by mm, discommoded keratin and some dust from the wax from the from the internal uh, from the from here the wax is formed but the inner two third which is the bony part which is lined by thin mucous membrane a thin skin thin skin so in this way uh, the formation of the external canal is uh, seen from uh, from the external canal if we go inside we can see the tympanic membrane which is a uh, layer drum which separates the external canal from the middle ear cavity so middle ear cavity is a cavity which is very narrow by concave in shape which vertical length is 15 mm and interposter length is 30 mm and in 2 mm in mid medial to lateral diameter that is at the center this uh, medial cavity is formed by the out in invasion of the i have already stated invasion of the sac cell part of the nasopharynx which is called the tubo tympanic recess this tubo enters as the tubo tympanic recess grows it covers the ossicular chain in the middle ear cavity and cauda tympani uh, nerve and it is filled with air yeah. and from here the the middle ear cavity at the posterior part of the roof there is another sets of formation of the extension of the air cells which first the air cell is the mustard and trunk from there mustard if air cells of different names that develop from the mustard antrum so the mustard antrum and mustard air cells with middle ear cavity and station tube all constitute all together constitute the uh, middle ear cleft so we no the middle ear cleft means the middle ear cavity proper is the shaft tube and master antrum and air cell system all together constitute the middle ear then inner ear the inner ear lies medial to the uh, middle ear cavity the middle to the middle ear cavity there is formation of at first the otic vesicles which i stated earlier that from the skin yeah, epithelial placot which get entrance in, in, inside to form the otic or or um, uh, otic vesicle which ultimately comes to the media aspect of the middle ear cavity to form the otic capsule with this sounding bone that is sounding bone uh, outside and inside the otic vesicle from otic vesicle the membranous labyrinth develop it is membrane labyrinth means the uh, sets of uh, or series of Uh, membranous 
tubes cavity uh, which are interconnected in the bony levering levering is is the internal layer levering why levering is called it uh, called because it is a complex area that's why it is called levering so there is two levering membranous levering and bony levering osseous levering osseous levering has got three parts that is number one is vestibule number two is bony semicircular canals number three is bony cochlea inside this bony cavities there lies the membranous levering which is consists of three parts that is semicircular canals membranous semicircular canals the utricle secure and cochlea these are the structures which lies the secure and uh, utricle lies in the west bony vestibule and the bony vestibule lies just uh, in a inner or uh, medial side of the medial layer cavity in this way the external air medial layer and internal layer are in the nearly same same plane so these uh, 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 three parts of the air which is completed the inner is completed in uh, like adults stays at the end of the fourth month that is after the fourth month of fetal life the fully developed internal layer is seen and the medial layer cavity uh, we know the medial layer cavity is a narrow cavity which contains ears it can tend here yeah, and circular chain cordative bed then it has uh, six walls and it is divided arbitrarily for the sake of understanding better understanding that is uh, epitympanum or atic mesotympanum and hypotympanum tympanum means medial air cavity medial air cavity tympanic cavity and tympanum is the same thing <coughs> so epitympanum or atic which is lies against the shrapnel membrane or the pars placita which is the part above the pars tensa <coughs> that, that is Uh, we have to understand first the parts of the tympanic cavity and parts of the uh, um, yeah, uh, tympanic membrane tympanic membrane has two parts number one is larger part which is pars tensa and uh, and the um, uh, upper part which is pars placida the tympanic membrane consists of three layers that is outer layer is epithelial layer middle layer is fibrous layer and internal is is the endothelial layer the middle fibrous layer is divided into two type of fibers consist of two type of fibers number one is uh, outer radial and inner circular fibers and some authors says the there is another sets of fiber which is parabolic fibers these fibers where the ossicles started that is we know the ossicles are three in number ossicles means smallest bone it is three numbers that is first set of number is malleus second incus and third is stapes these are the these three small bones or ossicles connected to each, each other 
forming a ossicular chain. We started from the tympanic membrane and ends to the mid medial wall of the tympanic cavity or medullary cavity at the fenestra ovale. So this epitympanum is a part which lies against the first facet or shaffron membrane. The mesentympanum lies against the uh, internal to the uh, mesotym uh, internal to the first tensor and hypotympan is below this. So if tympanum has a special uh, opening which is is called the editas editas and term which is its channel which, which <coughs> this channel which leads to the formation of the mustard and the middle layer cavity proper contains the circular chain and hypotypenum have some relation with the carotid artery, carotid artery. So in this case, we know that the wall, the relation of the wall of the middle layer cavity. The middle layer cavity has lateral wall, medial wall, anterior wall, posterior wall, roof and floor. The roof is made up of thin plate of bone, which is called tagment tympani, which separates the middle layer from the medial cranial fossa. The medial wall, lateral wall is made up of scutum, this is part of the tympanic bone above and the tympanic membrane below and anterior wall consists of bone which have some features that is anterior wall has four openings from four relations we, one from above downwards the first is a canal of bubuya through which the corner tympani nerve leaves the middle air cavity. Then there is a then there is an opening which is opening for station tube. Then another opening for opening for the muscles of one of the muscles of the middle air cavity that is tensor tympani muscles and below the relation with the carotid artery and mid medial wall of the middle air cavity there is some features at the center, near the center, there is a pulsing, which is called promontory. It is the, it represents the basal coil of the cochlea. Then, just be, below, below, there is an opening, which is covered by secondary tympanic membrane. It's called foramen rotunda or Rotundum or round window. And above and behind the promontory, there is another opening which is closed by the footplate of the stepes by annular ligament. And it is the foramen oval or oval window. Just above the above and behind the oval window, there is another 
bulging, which is the second genome of the fallopian or facial canal. Sometimes the there is dehiscence or of the bone which may expose the facial nerve to the mid cavity. Then another thing just above the fallopian canal there is another feature another pulsing which is due to the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canals and in front of the oval window there is a hook like structure which is called processus processus proctoridis from where the tensor tympani muscle turns around to insert into the neck of the malleus. That is, tensor tympani muscles start above the, from start at the anterior wall above the uh, opening of the station tube, from where this mass, this muscle goes behind and hooks around the processus cochlearis and comes to the neck of the malleus. And, and there is another muscle which is called stepias, step, stepidius. That is two muscles of the medial cavity. One is tensor tympani muscles, another is stepidius muscles. This stepidius muscles is connected to the neck of the stepis with the and tendon as in the pyramid, which is part of part uh, elevation, elevated part on the posterior wall. The posterior wall of the medullary cavity has some features. That is, central features is pyramid, which which loses the tendon of the stapedius and deeper or uh, medial to the pyramid, there is a space which is called sinus tympani and Lateral to the pyramid, there is a space called facial recess. These are the structures, it's very important to know because for the, for the surgical reason, that is for surgery in terms of the middle ear, we must know these structures. And <clears throat> then come to the internal ear. Internal air has three semicircular canals. There is membrane, and in the bony semicircular canals, this space is filled up with the perilid, which is like the fluid of the external extracellular fluid. That is high in content of sodium and low in content of potassium. And in the mem membranous library, especially in cochlea, uh, there is uh, cochlear duct which or which is filled up with the endolymph. That is, the structure of endolymph is very similar to the intercellular fluid. That is, high content of potassium and low content of sodium. So. The vestibular nerve arises from the semicircular canals and cochlear nerve arises from the cochlea. That is, cochlea is an organ of hearing and the semicircular canals are organ of balance. This balance and hearing is the function of the internal ear. Yeah. That is the the footplate of the semicircular footplate of the uh, middle wall of the tympani cavity which is which lead to the scala 
vestibule <coughs> it is a it is a fibular structure which in turns come to the foramen rotundum by scala tympani and between scala vestibule and scala tympani there lies the cochlear duct that is scala cochlearis or cochlear duct the cochlea is like the snail two and half turns in human being which has a central axis which is called modulus from the modulus the spiral of bone two and half round around the modulus and the tip of the modulus is called a helicotrap this from this modulus there are osseous spiral lamina extend from which the there from which there is a uh, extension of the the, the from the tip uh, external ridge of external margin of the uh, osseous spiral osseous lamina the horizontal uh, membrane which attaches the spiral spir lamina to the external wall of the cochlea this is called basilar membrane this is another membrane from this spiral lamina to the diagonally up and upwards to reach the external wall of the cochlea this is bony cochlea this resonal membrane these two membranes divides the cochlear inner tube into three parts that is scala vestibuli cochlear duct and scala tympani scala vestibuli rise above cochlear duct in the middle and scala tympani in the lies in the below this cochlear duct there there is the basilar membrane already i stated the basilar membrane on which there is lies the organ of corti organ of corti is the part which deals with the hearing organ of corti has two sets of cells inner hair cells and outer hair cells inner hair cells outer hair cells meet together uh, on the basilar membrane uh, uh, formation and uh, formation of a tunnel which is called the tunnel of corti the above the hair cells there is the another membrane which is called tectorial membrane this tectorial membrane slide on the hair cells so that there is shearing movement of the hair cells with the tectorial membrane by this way the microphonic action of the hair cells create the nerve impulse that is the sound or acoustic impulse which started from the outside through the extraeye canal to tympanic membrane then to ossicular chain then to vibrate the footprint then to scalar vestibuli then stimulate the hair cells by vibration and sharing by the tectorial membrane over the hair cells there is 4500 hair cells inner hair cells and 12500 outer hair cells these hair cells the inner hair cells are deal with the hearing so so the acoustic impulses which is turn transferred or transmitted into the nerve impulse by the sharing movement of the inner hair cells and tectorial membrane and this nerve impulse from the cochlea goes to the 
Benstead. In this way, the uh, bi bipolar neuroblast, which has which has uh, uh, peripheral nerve connected to the cochlea and the central nerve connected to the nucleus and the base of the fourth ventricle and the cells lie in the stellate ganglion, spiral ganglion, sorry, spiral ganglion and vestibular ganglion has the peripheral process to the <coughs> semicircular and central process to the brainstem. In this way, the through the internal acoustic meters, the vestibular cochlear nerve passes out. Yes, and some questions related to this is the anatomy. Uh, this is the review class, and some question you may record. Mm. These are the questions you see from my this is a question you can face in